hi guys welcome back to she rose so today's video is a very special video i'm super hyped because something epic has happened hmm? that you might ask well this past monday february 1st was my third spiritual birthday and for those of you who are like what's a spiritual birthday it's basically the day that i was reborn spiritually and i'm going to really talk about this today because i was actually rebaptized, and i know this is something that a lot of people wonder about like what's the deal with that and so i'm gonna be giving you guys a scoop uh on why i got rebaptized and just what that process was like what was different then versus three years ago and yeah before i do that i just want to give you guys a quick life update that i realized i never shared and that is i was leaving new york so i was actually out of new york i was at home where i'm originally from in virginia basically since Christmas I've been there but I am finally back in my regular space and just getting back into the everyday flow of life and I'm just so grateful to be back in NYC so I just wanted to let you guys know that because my background is like fluctuating and lastly I just gotta show you all this so my roommates actually surprised me with these absolutely beautiful flowers when I got back they are starting to be on their last breath but they're still so beautiful and they also wrote me this very cute little note um with my favorite scripture it is psalm 23 4 even though i walk through the darkest valley i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me and they said hey girl welcome back and happy earliest birthday love point grace which is the name of our household so I just thought this was so special okay and you guys are probably like what did a mecca get me so he actually got me this dog and <laughs> it was actually an inside joke because i've always wanted a cat and a dog best friend couple um and so yeah this is my dog i named him barnabas but yeah basil hasn't quite been a great friend to Barnabas. Unfortunately, he attacked him when they first met and he doesn't really seem to care for Barnabas, but it's all good. Um, I'm so really grateful. And another thing that Emeka did was him and a couple of close friends of mine decided to throw me a surprise party. And I was very surprised indeed. Um, basically, we were having like our normal Monday night Bible discussion and suddenly, uh, some new people popped into the group with surprise on their screen so I had no idea who was there and yeah a couple of really close friends of mine and my mom and different people just came out to share words of encouragement for me and it was just so beautiful I'm just like still in shock and just so grateful for the people that God has put in my life so it was just a very amazing night but outside of that i'm gonna go ahead and just sit down and probably just chat with you guys for the rest of the video so yeah i'll see you guys soon okay great so we are back and i'm going to now just chat a little bit about my experience with being re-baptized what is the dealio with that so yeah just talking a little bit about before i actually did get baptized when i was around 16 years old in a baptist church i will post my full testimony video below for you guys to check that out it just really goes more in detail um but yeah that's what happened with that and i would say like at the time i did know that you know baptism was the right thing to do you know it's what i was taught and it's really what i wanted to do but i think what was missing was in my heart i really didn't know what it meant to actually be baptized and what my life would need to look like afterwards and so this was something that i really wrestled with because even though i felt like this definite spiritual high you know after my baptism and maybe even like in the weeks following over time it slowly fizzled out and deep down i think i knew like something was not right and i still felt very confused i still had a lot of questions about god and i didn't really feel certain about my relationship with god even though i had been baptized and so that was scary as you can imagine 
it was scary but it was also like something I really didn't want to face because it's like what did facing it even really mean and that was just a very weird experience so that's where I was at and then there were a couple of events that did happen in my life that just kind of like started to expose the doubt that I was feeling and one of those things was I was in a relationship with someone that didn't believe in God and so there was a lot with that. There was also just going away to college, you know, and I would say that really my heart started to change and I just wanted to pursue the world and really took my focus off of God, unfortunately, at that time. So that's what it looked like. And so what was different three years ago? Um, well, a lot, <laughs> to be real. So leading up to the day of my baptism three years ago, I actually had been doing Bible studies with some very amazing women in my life. And it was like, okay, look, like let's look at the Bible and actually get to know God from his perspective. And so through that process, I was really able to dismantle like a lot of the traditions, a lot of the different opinions that I had formed about God on my own. And also with that, just finding out what baptism actually is and the commitment that I would really be making with God and so I really had to learn all of that and make a decision, an informed decision, not an emotional decision, um, but really count the cost, look at my life and see okay like what is this going to take. So yeah that being said I know that baptism is like a very controversial thing for some reason. There's a lot of confusion about it, a lot of different thoughts about it out there. Um, but the cool thing is the Bible is very clear and so Phew, like we definitely have clear information from God on the need for baptism and on what it actually is. Okay, great. Sorry guys, I actually had to take a pause and now the lighting is completely different, but amen, we're gonna keep it pushing. So I actually wanted to share scripture with you guys and that really helped me when it came to picturing what is happening when you get baptized or what should be happening. So. Um, the scripture is in Romans chapter 6 and starting in verse 1, I'm going to read. So actually, I think it could be cool if you guys do have a Bible or if you have your Bible app to so go ahead and pause this now and just read along with me um, because this is a really great one. So yeah, it's in Romans chapter 6 verse 1. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. It's so cool. So just a little bit of context. This is actually Paul and he's a very well-known preacher in the Bible. And he's really setting the record straight here, specifically for the church in Rome at this time. And it's because unfortunately they had this false idea about God. This idea that the more they sinned, the more grace they would get. And so they thought, let's just sin more so that we can get more grace. And Paul is like, nah. He says, by no means do we want to continue living in sin. And it just really goes to show that God's grace is really meant to lead us to a decision and a decision to no longer live in a lifestyle of sin. And that was the first thing for me that was really missing from my baptism before. It was this understanding and A, an understanding of what is sin. <laughs> Like, I literally had to study the Bible out and understand what is sin to God and what personally in my life would have to change so that I could live this new life that God wanted to give me. And so that was the first thing. And then the second part, um, this is really cool because it's basically talking about how baptism is literally being buried with Christ so that we can rise to a new life just as he did. So it's a participation and the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And that is something different than what I thought before because I thought the baptism was just a symbol or just a profession of like my faith uh, to my family, to the people that were in my church. Um, but no, there's actually something that's taking place in the water. So I actually made this little diagram that I know that diagrams just help me mentally. So I'm going to show you guys here. So here is my old life that's old Amanda and when I got baptized and went under that water she died she literally died my way of living my life 
died and she rose to a new life like how did that cool so this new life that we're living i do want to say it's not a life of perfection by any means but it is a life of the true freedom in christ that god wants to give us so that's actually it for today's video thank you guys so much for celebrating my third spiritual birthday with me and just being a part of the journey of she rose and my new life with christ so any of you guys can relate to my story or you have any more questions about this please feel free to reach out to me here i'll post my instagram that's probably the best way to get in contact with me and also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you guys next week bye